Hi, I'm Pam, and I would like to welcome you to the Live Authentically Show. My team and I help other people step into their authentic realities, and we do this a number of ways. This podcast is one of them. I am also an executive coach, and I help high-level executives reach sky-high levels of success in all areas of their life. Also, I'm going to be getting into public speaking this year, which I'm super excited about, so watch for more information on that. And we have a great show planned today. We have Martin Root with us. Hey, Martin. Hi, Pam. So nice to have you here. Thanks so much for taking time out of your day to be here. Thank you. Of course, I'm excited about our discussion. So Martin is the president of Livelihood, and he explores the deeper meaning of work and its contribution to society. To society, I love that and can't wait to hear more about it. But first, as all of our viewers and listeners know by now, um, the question that I start off all of my shows with is, how do you live authentically every day? I love the question. Thank you. I don't have a off the top, how do I live authentically? I see what's true for me. And I see where I can leverage the difference that I make in the world. And I have to have time for laughter and puns and playing with people and some intellectual stimulation. Some I, I like innovative, unique thinkers. Mm-hmm. How else do I live authentically? I try to step up to the plate and, and tell people in a nice way the negative stuff. The positive stuff is easy, but the negative stuff, to Mm -hmm. say that with some heart and soul, uh, Mm -hmm. and yet still get the message across. And let's talk a little bit about that. What do you mean by negative stuff? Can you define that and explain that a little bit more? Well, I'll tell you exactly. I had a a fabulous uh, example last evening. There's a woman who is I've adopted her as my niece because her father and I are very close and he passed away and I kind of feel responsible for her. So, and she's a mid-level manager at a very large corporation Mm -hmm. and she's been late for three of the last four conversations and with, with a really BS excuse. And Mm -hmm. yesterday uh, was the same. And I just went, Kim, I, I need to tell you something. Do you know this this pattern of being late all the time or most of the time? Mm-hmm. And she kind of poo-pooed it. But I made the point at the end of the session of our talk, rather, she said, you know, Uncle Martin, I've got to tell you, I did hear you and I will make changes. Mm-hmm. And that was lovely. Mm, I love that. I love that. And it's so powerful. You know, I think it's really important that we we address those. And there's such an art to communicating as I know you well know. And, um, you know, it's interesting that you share that example because I'm in the process of writing uh, my next blog about people management. And, you know, when I was in my twenties, I was an actuary and I did people management as one of my, one of my roles. And, you know, looking back, I don't think I was a real good people manager. I mean, I think I was more like, I was brought up by an you know, old school Italian dad, just like, you know, follow the rules, like very like military style kind of, well, that might be a little exaggeration, but you know, I'm pretty old school and looking back, I would probably, I would approach a lot of situations differently. You know, I would ask more questions. You know, I had people working for me who were late and that used to drive me bonkers. I'm a Virgo. Like my sessions start like on time, the doors locked at like <laughs> 901. <laughs> And, uh, you know, I probably would ask more questions. Like I've learned over the years to get curious. So I'm just curious if that's part of, if that's been part of your journey, the whole of, you know, getting curious, asking powerful questions, seeking to understand, stepping into somebody else's human experience. Curiosity has always, always been a major part of my life. So that's not new. I'm curious about everything. How do things work? Why do you think that way? Um, you disagree with me, but so help me understand why um, the the issue of telling you something negative. I always used to just blurt it out, and I read something recently, about a year ago actually, 
in which the guy said, you start with a positive, mm -hmm. then you go to the negative, and then you give another option. So for example, you ask me today, I'm making this up, you ask me today to come and meet with you for lunch next Tuesday. Thank you very much, Pamela, for asking me. That's really kind of you. Unfortunately, I can't do next Tuesday. Uh, is there somebody else you could go to, to lunch with? Rather than just saying, no, I can't do it. And I like that a lot because it it put the no inside of a yes. It put the no inside of, a, of forwarding the relationship. And I really like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I love that. And I love how it's bookended with positives. And Correct. it's shown like from neuro, kind of from a neuroscience perspective, the way the brain works, you know, it's, it's shown that we remember things at the beginning and at the end and what's in, in, in the middle is, is not always remembered as, as clearly. So I love that you've, you consciously structure your conversations that way. Um, let's Since I read that, it, it wasn't before. <laughs> <laughs> Since I went read that methodology, I went, oh yeah, that makes okay, sense. So yeah. go ahead, yes. You're a powerful a one. Yeah, I was gonna say so many different directions we can go on the show, but what do you believe that your purpose here on earth is? There have been three major purposes in my life. The first one was to bring the idea of vision. I was a consultant in Canada at the time to bring the idea of vision into business, which, mm -hmm. I mean, when I say it to you now, it's like, what's he talking about? But in the late eighties uh, in Canada, were you to bring up the, the word vision? I mean, you must've been smoking dope and just moved here from California. It was that wild. Uh, and then I followed that by doing a lot of work on spirituality and work. Okay. As a conversation, not as an imposition. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the most recent work is Project Heaven on Earth. I'm fascinated, Pam, by the idea of the soul's dream we have for the kind of life and work and relationship and nation and world that we want. And the idea popped into my head, oh, you mean heaven on earth. I can remember thinking that thought going, oh, my God, you can't say that. And mm -hmm. then I thought, well, why not? I can talk to you about hell on earth. That's permissible conversation. Why can't we talk about heaven on earth? So yeah. The last 30-ish years have been about exploring the notion of how do I evoke the heaven on earth knowing within you? It's not for me to impose what heaven on earth is by my definition, because I don't think that would work on you, but rather to evoke the heaven on earth that's already present. And we didn't talk about this before the interview. I mean, do you want to, so I developed these three questions. Do you want to, are you willing to play yeah. a little bit here? Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So recall a time when you experienced heaven on earth. What was going on? Let's see. Let me think about that. Several, actually. Um, having my kids, I would have to say. Okay. Second question. Imagine you have a magic wand. Mm -hmm. And with this wand, you can actually have heaven on earth. What's heaven on earth for you? It's a feeling of peace a feeling of everything, of, of all is well, that like every, that everything is right with the world kind of feeling. Very clear. And the third question, what simple, easy, concrete step will you take in the next 24 hours to have more peace? I love that. Um, breathe more, you know, consciously breathe, like slow down and just take a breath. Cause I find that I know I, I kind of get, hurried and rushed throughout my days sometimes. And I need to just consciously slow down and just breathe and look around and take it all in. So let's go through the questions because I want you to understand structurally why I asked them. So question one, excuse me, recall a time when you experienced heaven on earth. What you did instantly was say the birth of my children. What you did not do and what no one does, Pam, virtually is say, is ask, what do you mean by heaven on earth? Mm -hmm. I didn't define it. I didn't mm -hmm. say what it was. And yet when I asked you, recall a time when you experienced heaven on earth, bang, you went right to it. And it's because I'm saying that there's a part in you, an already knowing about what heaven on earth is. And so when the question is asked, recall a time when you experienced heaven on earth, you go back there, 
you jump on that and you know, because mm-hmm. people, most people have had an experience of heaven on earth and it is the already knowing about what that is. Then the second question, the, the uh, magic wand, here's a magic wand and with it, you can have heaven on earth. The magic wand removes the necessity of having to know how you're going to do it. And if you don't have to know how, because that's the magic wand's job, you can just go to the what, and you went right to it. Peace, Mm -hmm. peace, peace. I don't wanna leave it there. I want to actually have you engage. So what would having more peace, i.e. more heaven on earth, how could you do that simply, easily, concretely in the next 24 hours? And again, you went right to it, slow down and breathe. Mm -hmm. So previously slowing down and breathing was nice. But now when we add the context, if you choose, of slowing down and breathing is my direct contribution to peace, which is my direct contribution to heaven on earth. Now there's a whole new story about what you're doing and why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And I'm curious um, to hear your responses to those questions. Like what is heaven on earth for you? (sighs) I don't have a stock answer because I like to answer that fresh every time. Mm-hmm. We went out to our cottage today by the ocean and just seeing it for the first time after the winter and being on the ocean and smelling the air and just feeling nature coming alive, spring popping up everywhere. That was, and then seeing how happy my wife was there. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's heaven on earth for me. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Love that. So yeah, tell me more about your work and how you incorporate this whole ideology into your daily work. So by asking the three questions, I get people to be, I get you to be in touch with what heaven on earth is and that you can, by taking a simple action by your definition, begin to create more of that. Mm -hmm. And so I have a blog, I have a free course, I have a blog on Project Heaven on Earth is the title of the, blo- of the uh, website. Mm-hmm. I have now people all around the world doing their own unique projects. There's a newspaper in India in the city of Dehradun called the Dehradun Street. And he interviewed me like this. And I said, what are you doing for Heaven on Earth? What, what, what? Long story short, on the masthead of every issue in big capital letters, Derridun, a heaven on earth city. Amazing. We have a real estate agent who's, uh, we were talking about what the sufferings are in the world. And she said, homelessness. And, and she, she went white. You could just see how deeply, deeply homelessness affected her. Long story short, she's created a program in her agency called A Home for Everyone, whereby every agent is asked and has agreed to um, donate $100 off of every commission into this fund. At the previous agent she was at, they raised over $400,000. She's now, and, and they would have people apply for homes. Now she's shifted that uh, newly in the new agency and they're actually buying They bought a home. Last year was the first year in this agency. They Mm -hmm. bought a home for a man and his family. He's suffering from severe kidney disease. A a man from Africa who lives in Montreal, Canada, who has started a program on Facebook called Africa, a heaven on earth continent. These people come up with ideas that are made. A police officer in Texas has created a 16-page manual called heaven on earth for law enforcement. Mm. And I asked him like, what's heaven on earth for, for policing? And he said, a crime free world and people helping each other. And he's created a manual on that. So the examples just go on and on and on. What I've realized Pamela is when people discover what heaven on earth is for them by their definition and realize that they can do something about it and start to do something about it, it shifts their minds, it shifts their impact. I went on Google last year 
uh, sorry, uh, at the beginning of this year, and put in the phrase in quotes, heaven on earth 2020, uh, 2020 and heaven on earth 2021. There was a 64% rise in the use of the phrase heaven on earth between those two years. So I think with COVID and the environment and the Russian invasion of the Ukraine, people are sick of the story of the world and they want a new story. And if you can have a new story, why not create the ultimate one? Well, what's that? Heaven on earth. Okay, I'm in. So the, that phrase is coming more and more popular. It's more and more normalized. And mm-hmm. it's part of culture now. Yeah, I love that. And it's so in line with the direction, you know, collective consciousness is moving in this whole rise in spirituality. And I was talking to one of my friends recently about the, the concept, which is in line with this, obviously equanimity, right? This whole idea of, of achieving heaven on earth, as opposed to religion. And this isn't about, you know, evangelizing people in one camp or the other. It's just about highlighting the difference, right? Religion is about well, hopefully, you know, hopefully I can get to heaven someday. Hopefully if I do the right things while I'm on this earth, I can, you know, I can get into heaven, but the whole idea of spirituality, of equanimity, this whole idea that we can create heaven on earth right here, right now is very empowering. And I think it it really calls people to a level of action that they didn't even realize that they had under the old paradigm. This is what's interesting. I'm, I'm smiling here. Uh, at the end of December, I have finished an eight week course with a group of Catholic nuns, the Marthas. And that was exactly the realization that they came through. All of them thought that heaven was a place you go after death, fine. They hadn't realized that you can actually create heaven here. Why does this have to be not heaven? Think about it, it doesn't make sense. And so they got it, they got it. And it was so exciting to open that new paradigm, that new perspective for them. Yeah. Yeah. That must've been exciting to see. Um, what changes, like what aha moments did they have and what changes, do you know, what changes they put into, into place in their own life to help, you know, a number of things. Um, they're elderly. This is the hard part here. The youngest member of the community is 57 and there's no new members coming in. So a lot of them are ill. So they visit a lot. They visit the Mm -hmm. ill a lot. They pray a lot. And so I said, look, whatever action you take, if that action is in the context of heaven on earth for you, of creating heaven on earth, then it counts. Mm -hmm. My wife and I had this argument years ago. She was doing this program called Many Mothers. So a woman would have a new baby, whether it's her first or second or more. She made it, my wife would go in and volunteer one afternoon a week. And whatever the new mother wanted, whatever she wanted, Maida would do. Oh, sit wow. With old, sit with the old children, uh, wash the floor, do the anything the mother wanted, Maida would do it. And I was doing Heaven on Earth. And she said to me, you know, I'm just working with one mother, creating a little mini mother, you know, give her some, uh, give her a break. And you're out there doing Heaven on Earth. I said, no. No, no, no. It's the same thing. The content's different, but the context is exactly the same. For you, your contribution is many mothers. That's your contribution to heaven on earth. I don't want to do that. For me, my contribution is speaking to people and putting the message out in the world. You don't want to do that. It's you. We're doing what's unique to each of us. And Mm -hmm. most contributions are equal. Yeah, I love that. I was just thinking as you were talking about that, that's a mom's dream right there. I was, I wish I knew you back in the day when I was having my kids and I couldn't get out of my pajamas any day before noon. It was a uh, pretty dicey years there when I had all my littles. Um, it, that how many children? Four. Four. Four, yeah. No, you can't believe the story she would come home with in terms of, it was wonderful. And you could mm-hmm. just see the mother would just like, well, I never saw the mother, but the mother would just like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, let me just go sleep with my new baby. Or, yeah. You know, do the laundry, do some, anything. Yeah. Just yeah. to be of service to the mother. Mm-hmm. That's so nice that she did that. I love that. So um, I want to, let me, as we're going on here, I want, this is the book I wrote. Oh, I love and, it. Gorgeous cover. Thank you. I love the greens and blues. Yeah. Very well, nice. and if you see it's heaven above earth below and mm-hmm. heaven on earth here, but I want you to do me a favor and read the title. 
Project Heaven on Earth. Now, do you know that there's another title embedded in the same title? Mm -hmm. Use project as a verb. Project. Oh, project Heaven on Earth. <laughs> I love it. Oh, very clever. So it's both a noun, you and I are working on this project, and a verb. We are projecting heaven on earth. So the book mm -hmm. is the three questions that I just asked you. And then when you ask that question over and over and over and over and over, hundreds and hundreds of time, you begin, Pam, to see gateways, repeating gateways that keep coming up over and over. So the rest of the book goes into, there's seven of them. Internal, some people say, the more heaven on earth with, it, uh, inside of me, the more it will show up in the world. Some people say living a value, joy, in your case, peace, that's living a global value. Relationships, you know, you're in my relationship is a hell on earth one. Good, what's going to take to clean it up? Mm -hmm. I, I'm making that up. We have a wonderful relationship. I know, um, <laughs> I know you're joking. <laughs> <laughs> ending the suffering, hunger, war, poverty, making an institution. What if the purpose of government, of religion, of mm -hmm. science, of health was to help co-create heaven on earth. What would it do? A nation, your nation as a heaven on earth nation. And finally, this here now is heaven on earth. So each of those seven gateways kept coming up over and over. And I thought, aha, because when I started this inquiry into heaven on earth, I wanted to get the lay of the land. Mm -hmm. So I began by saying, what's heaven on earth for you? It's too big a question. You can't ask people that because they can't get it. But if you ask the three questions that I asked you, recall mm -hmm. a time you experienced heaven on earth. Here's a magic yeah. wand. What's heaven on earth for you? What are you going to do in the next 24 hours? It eases people in. And then mm -hmm. by asking those questions hundreds of times, those gateways appeared. So going through the book, it's a workbook. It's not a read book. It's an okay. engage your mind and soul book. So by the time you're finished, you discover what your heaven on earth project is. You discover mm -hmm. the unique contribution that only you can make. I don't know what it is, but you'll discover what it is. And so that's the book, oh, it's Project so Heaven on Earth on Amazon. Okay, I will have to check it out next time I'm on Amazon. Awesome. So who are your clients? Who do you work with? I'm doing mostly, I, I think it's an interesting question because in the last week or so, I've begun a transition. The last 30 years, really, Pamela, were about speaking one-on-one -on -one to people or groups of stranger groups, not so much intact groups, about mm -hmm. opening this idea of heaven on earth because it was still new, it was still bold, it was still radical because of, I believe, because of COVID and the environment and the, and the, the war in uh, Ukraine, people are much more willing now to engage in, oh, okay, I am ready for heaven on earth. And so I'm starting to work with groups. Actually, I'm having a first little meeting, uh, and I just set it up yet today. In two or three weeks, there's a small group of women who have gotten together and over, I think, eight or 12, I, actually, a number of weeks, I don't know how many, they met twice a week and they would go through a number of pages in the book until they went through the entire book. So I want to get their collective sense. The same thing in December when I, I worked with this group of uh, Catholic nuns. So mm -hmm. we're moving now into groups, group consciousness, which I think really, you know, it, it, we need to do the unique, the individual, and we need to do the universal humanity. Mm -hmm. like, because what I'm saying is, Heaven on earth is the new story of what it means to be a human and what it means to be humanity. Yeah, I love that. And I think it's so powerful to do it on and necessary to do it on both levels, both the individual level for that individual accountability, you know, radical, just, you know, transformation, just that self-awareness, et cetera, but also at the group level, because, you know, we all know the power of connection. There's a synergy there and, you know, there's just such a powerful, um, you know, it's such a powerful thing when groups come together. So I love that it's happening on both fronts. Well, I, I mean, you know, one and one would equal three is what I'm beginning to see. It's, there's an impact that's greater than just the individual separately. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's needed. Mm -hmm. It's needed. Yeah. 
So what's next for you? What are your plans over the next handful of years to continue to spread this message? To continue to spread it more, to move more into groups. That's the next, I think that's the next. And I've been working on a new book about paradise oh. called Paradise Found as opposed to Paradise Lost. So that's that's the new work too. Both groups in heaven on earth and paradise found. That's Those are the two prongs of uh, the next piece of work. And how do you define paradise as compared well, to heaven? Here's what happened. My wife, this, literally just before COVID, we were in just north of Miami, mm-hmm. staying with a friend. She was busy. And uh, I said, okay, let's just go for a walk. And in one of those gated communities, everything's perfect. It's lovely. And we're walking down the street. And I said to my wife, out, without thinking, I said, this is paradise. And I forgot about it. And a couple of days later, I was speaking to a friend and I said, you know, I think it's time to engage with paradise. So most people think that paradise shows up in moments, Mm -hmm. right? And I'm saying, yes, it does. But really, it's here all the time. It is we who show up in moments. So the purpose of this new book is to get that paradise is here. Where else could it be? Mm -hmm. Where else could heaven be? And if you think about paradise not being here about about um you know being kicked out of the garden of eden and it's a one-way street out and we can never ever re-experience again well i show in the book how that's not accurate Mm -hmm. yeah and i love it again so empowering such an empowering concept that we can create our paradise no matter who we are no matter where we are you know we get more of what we think about right so where our attention goes energy flows and and that grows so if we are focusing on the negative then we're going to be creating our own hell on earth but if we constantly are looking for the positive finding the light the lessons the love the gratitude the appreciation then we keep getting more and more of that so i love i love the work that you're doing in the world and um would like we've got another minute or two before we wrap up but i'd like to give you an opportunity to, to just open up the floor and talk about anything so if you like to share you know i'd like to hear about you know where we can get in touch with you if people would like to directly and just anything else you'd like to share sure um you can go to my website project heavenonearth.com you can sign up for a free seven-day course and you'll get a free weekly blog the purpose of the blog is to normalize heaven on earth, heaven on earth, heaven on earth, heaven on earth. It has a real effect on your mind and on your being when you see this over and over and over. It And I, I want to say it again, it normalizes that thought. You can go on Amazon. I'm inviting you to go on Amazon and buy three of these books. Why three? One for you, one for somebody in your life right now who you know needs it. So just think of who that person is. It should come right to mind. Mm -hmm. And one for somebody who's going to come into your life and you'll go, you know what? I had this waiting. This is for you. So I invite you to be a heaven maker. I invite you to go out and start creating the kind of life and work and nation and world that are individual and our collective soul is longing for now we are at a turning point in humanity's evolution you can make the difference now by making this the kind of world that your soul longs for that our souls long for amazing thank you well thank you so much for being on my show today and for all of this beautiful work that you're putting out in the world such a beautiful legacy and uh you know, so many people are benefiting. So thank you again. Thank you, Pam. And thank you for this. Thank you for the work you're doing. Ditto and legacy. You're so welcome. You're so welcome. It's uh, it doesn't even really feel like work. It feels like a exactly. you know, privilege. It feels like a spiritual calling. Um, and I truly, truly enjoy every minute of it. So I'm again, really grateful that you've taken time out of your schedule to be on my show today. And I'm grateful for my viewers and listeners as well. I so appreciate you. You guys keep showing up day after day and uh, looking to learn and grow all the while. So thank you all very much and have a wonderful day. Bye.